Hi there, and we're going to look at some Poisson type problems today. So a distribution that we're going to assume uh, meets the requirements of a Poisson distribution. Now the only little thing I want to add in since the last video is uh, that to remember that in the Poisson distribution, wow this is a great pen, then the lambda is the mean and in the Poisson we assume it is also the variance. Now obviously in real life sometimes um, it's very rare to get exactly the same values so long as they're kind of close, uh, I mean very very close, uh, you can use a Poisson distribution instead. Right, on to, on to the example for today. Now um, I've written out every question so if you want, you're allowed to stop it, pause it, um, try them yourself, and then come back and see if you, your solution matches my solution. So today's problem is with my friend Calvin, um, who has actually just got engaged, so congratulations. And because YouTube never dies, uh, congrats on also your first child, your second child, your third child, uh, your first grandchild and congrats on also giving me £2,000 next summer for my birthday. Pushing it slightly. Okay, so my friend Calvin, he used to work in a taxi call centre. On any normal day, he would expect to take six calls every 10 minutes. So that our mean is also called um, the expected value as well. So now what is the probability uh, in the first question, that he takes six calls in this time. Well, our distribution, we always state it first, is Poisson at the mean of six calls. And the best part is, uh, this is in our table. So in your Poisson tables, uh, 6 is so uh, a mean, lambda of 6, and what's the chance we get exactly 6 calls? Well, just like in a binomial, this is uh, the summation of the previous probabilities. So what we need to do is to find exactly 6, we need the probability x is equal to or less than 6, Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this would give us all of this stuff. And you take away from that 5 and lower. So you'll take away probability x is less than or equal to 5. Which gives us from our tables. So I go lambda is 6, and looking at 6 is 0 0.6062. I'm going to take away everything less than that, which is 0 0.4457. So the probability of, probability of getting exactly six calls is quickly going to be 4457, 0 0.1606. So as an answer, probability x equals 6 is there we go. Beautiful. Right. In our second question, Calvin takes a bathroom break uh, between 10.23 and 10.28. What's the chance he misses no calls while he's away at the bathroom? Well, first thing to notice is the length of time here. It's no longer 10 minutes. We're down to 5 minutes. And let's think, let's think about this. If you expect six calls every 10 minutes, then every five minutes, you should expect half the number of calls. So now we're gonna have a new distribution. Um, call it Y. And this is now an average of three calls. So what's the chance that he gets, well, that's a Y obviously, uh, zero calls in this time. Uh, again, luckily, as it happens, Three is on our table, what luck is that? So, a mean of three, and a chance 
or getting zero calls is going to be 0 0.0498 or a 4.98% chance he gets no calls in this time. So odds are he's missed at least one or two of them. Okay, next question down. Now, you know, in the world of work, things can change at any second. And here, a driver has phoned in to say he's going to finish his shift 15 minutes early. Okay, this leaves only four cars available. What's the chance he gets more than four calls in this period? Now again, this is not a five minute period, it's not a 10 minute period, but now a 15 minute period. So the new variable 15, so in 15 minutes, you should expect to get nine calls. So now, let's call it Z. No, bad choice, let's not use Z, let's use W. Okay, and this case is now to nine. So you find what's the probability in this time he gets more than four calls. Because obviously four is okay, there's four cars, and more than four is an issue. Now, remember you're never too far away from a number line and stats. So, so useful. So more than four. More than four means obviously five or bigger. Now our table only shows less than or equal to. So if, if we can find the probability of getting four or less, we can take that away from one and what's left is obviously a chance of getting more than, more than four. And as luck would have it, uh, nine is also in our table. So chance of getting four or less, so four is over here. So 0 0.5, where are we? Five, zero. So chance we're gonna get more than four is one minus that. Which is one minus zero point of chord. Uh huh. So there is going to be a zero point nine four five chance to get more than four calls. There we go. Wow, he looks a little bit stuffed in that one. Okay, then now the last question. The last question down here is a little bit trickier. So going back to that five minute period, so that was our Y distribution and where the Poisson had an expected value of three. It defines some values in reverse now. So using the table backwards, if you like. So the first one is a probability that Y is less than or equal to some strange number A uh, equals 0 0.9161. This is probably the easiest easiest of them. Uh, we use it straight from our table because this, this setup matches our table setup here. Yeah, it's a less than or equal to scenario. So under 3, we've just got to find 0 0.9161, which is there. So our A value must have been, wait, you can't see that. Mm -hmm. So 9161 is there, so our A value must have been 5. So probability that y is less than or equal to 5 is 9161, therefore a is 5. Now it starts to get a little bit trickier now. Okay. This time, y is less than b is 0 0.6472. So again, we can look up the value in our table for 6472 under 3, and that is 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember our table, so it's 3, shows us less than or equal to, so it's including the 3. Okay, so this value must include the 3. So it's a less than 
we're looking at less than four. Because anything less than four includes R, three, two, one, and zero. Suppose that Y is less than four, 0 0.6472, which is the same thing as saying less than or equal to three. And our third one is perhaps the trickiest. So please do stop this as I go along to try it yourself. If you think you have a hang of it, just try it and see what you get and come back again. So, probability that y is bigger than or equal to c is 0.5768. Now, as it's a bigger than, we need to look at the reverse case. So my first step is to find out what the one minus version is. And that would give us 0 0.4232. So in our table, if you look that up, 4232, oops, is 2. Okay, now here's a number line that's really useful. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know that this is that there. Okay. Now, the question asks for the bigger than or equal to C. All right, bigger than or equal to C. So R1 minus would give us this side. So this probability here refers to this side of the line, which means is everything includes 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So our probability is in y is bigger than or equal to 3, equals 0 0.5768. Okay, just a quick one today. Uh, there's a real variety of questions in there. If you manage to stop it and have give it a go, that is fantastic, well done. Even better if you got it right, but even better than that, is if you made a mistake. So well done if you made a mistake, as long as you then learn from it and understood how to do it. If not, give it a go again and try it again. I'd suggest, to be honest, if you've done it, made a mistake, give it maybe an hour or two, then go back and have, have another go and see if you get it right first time round without making a mistake.